Thanks. So just unmute yourself and say five minutes until you have Ori's attention. Okay. And yeah, try. I hope I see you because at the moment I just see four. Uh... He's going to, he'll speak. He'll actually unmute. Oh, okay. Okay. He'll, Perfect. He'll make yeah. a bunch of noise. And then when you hear him, Ori, if you could just tell him cool. that you can hear him. Yeah. Him. Feel free to stop me because then otherwise I keep going. Yeah. Okay. We'll do five. We'll do five minute, five minute warning from the time we start. Um, the class is about an hour long, um, so you can just. We figured about twenty minutes per student, um, or maybe eighteen. We get started a little yeah. late. Mm -hmm. And let's see. Are do we have um, Dustin? Could you send an email to the rest of, to any studio members not here? Okay. And remind them that this is our time. Mm -hmm. Great. How, okay. How, how many are you in the class? Uh, well, at least like 15 or so. Okay. okay, super. So hi, everybody. Welcome to another one of our beautiful, wonderful guest artists, visitors uh, and series this semester. And um, keep checking out our Facebook page. We have, I think, the entire list up by now. Right, Dustin? Yeah, for the whole yeah. semester, not just the artists coming in, but we have our recitals listed and that's under the I think under the post that specifies the artist, but it's all in there somewhere. Um, we have uh, my master classes, our workshops, our student presentations. Normally we meet at three o'clock on Tuesdays and Thursdays. This is an exception because we're dealing with um, international time zones. Um, and I'd like to officially welcome uh, Ori, who is gonna start with, he, he's in Vienna right now. He's gonna start with an introduction about himself, his teachers, uh, what he, does as a musician, and then we'll have three uh, flutists play. We have Telemann Fantasy, two excerpts, and the Boom Grand Polonaise, and our artists are Sammy Holloman, uh, Dustin White, and JC Creighton. And for your information, the order is Telemann, did you um, say Boom? Yeah, I think let's do this one. And excerpts, okay, just so you guys know. So Ori, take it away. Thank you. Well, thanks a lot for the invitation first. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. So yeah, I'm in Vienna and um, well, I'm basically a member of the Geneva Camerata in Switzerland. So you will see my whole career is very kind of international because I do the Geneva thing. Then I'm also principal flutist with uh, another chamber orchestra, which is here in Vienna. And then I'm also principal in another festival orchestra, which is in Korea. And uh, a guest uh, principal in Munich. So it's very uh, active and international. Uh, I've done my studies mostly with uh, Jacques Zun in both in Geneva and in Madrid. So five years with Jacques, which were actually really amazing. And um, besides earlier I've done, I was in, I come from Israel, so I did my studies in, in Israel with uh, Yossi Arnheim, which was at the time the principal of the Israeli Philharmonic. And um, yeah, that's shortly about me. Now today I'm teaching in a, quite a special program I've created here in Vienna, which um, you might have seen it uh, through the different social medias it's called Flute in Wien. And uh, I offer a little bit of a different uh, kind of work because we're doing uh, either very intensive master classes, which each player would actually play up to three hours of classes a day. So we actually get to work a lot and this we do over, I don't know, three, four, five days, whatever. And um, since this whole pandemic has uh, started, I start doing a kind of a warm up routine uh, courses. Um, which really takes a lot of the just the technical aspects um, and uh, that we need for playing and really break down them into the smallest uh, details we need so whether it's about lip flexibility or air pressure or each one would have a dedicated exercise and we might be doing a few of them today just uh, as a little um, example for that kind of work that I do. So that's a little bit about me. I would suggest we start. Okay, thank you so much. Um, so we're gonna listen to Sammy first, and then Ori, when you want me to pause her. Just yeah. make let's, uh, let's start with the first movement, and we stop there, and we we'll keep from there. Okay, just the first movement, okay.
Hello, my name is Sammy Holloman, and today I will be playing for you Telemon Fantasy number eight. Sorry. It's okay. We can we can stop there. I mean, we, we're you are done. frozen. Okay. okay. Don't worry. That's fine. Great. Great, Sammy. Great. <laughs> nice. So I wanted um, to start, and it's great actually you've recorded the whole thing because then I could uh, listen to the whole uh, piece that you were playing. Um, what would you say for you is the kind of the biggest challenge or maybe a difficulty, especially in this movement? Can you see Sammy okay, Ori? Uh, yeah, I kind of. Okay, Sammy, yeah. wave your hand so he knows uh, how to get yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, I can see here. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would say for me the biggest problem is finding the forward motion. I feel like I get very heavy and very stuck, especially okay. in this movement. So this is musically and technically? Oh, and then from musically and technically, the intonation, especially when I'm jumping to the upper octaves within the large intervals, uh, right. I tend to be very flat. A little bit. I was actually a bit more uh, concerned about the, let's say, the, how clean the, the notes are, and especially at the end of each note, or especially the kind of the ending of the phrases. And I find that um, I mean, it could be that also because you were very close with the microphone and stuff, so you, I could pick that actually very strongly. But um, in general, I think we could use to a way to find, like, to find a way how to to clean a little bit that, so um, it's you are a bit more in control. And and I'm not sure, um, but I had a feeling that if you are able to use a little more. The, the, the muscles around kind of the lips basically so allow them to, to be more flexible and to do that kind of work I think you will gain a lot okay. now um, now this is tricky and it's probably we're not going to manage to solve it all kind of in 20 minutes because it actually it is also related to the way how you use the air first so you need to be able to find that way to use your air pressure correctly in order to allow the lips actually to be more free. So keep that in mind. Now, also a um, few things that I would just uh, kind of uh, say about how you did the, the movement. So when I played the Baroque pieces, I'm trying to, or let's say it differently, whatever notes are written, in this case, all the 60 notes uh, values, they're not always equal. So some of them should be longer, some of them should be softer, some of them should be shorter, quicker. So we can play a lot around that and we will find some ways how to do it. 
But going back first for the technical aspect of it, I would like now that we just try quite a simple, I mean, it's not simple, but uh, you will see, it's just a scale, basically. So um, what I want you to do is to kind of to imitate now the effect of what will happen if you would be just hitting a bell. That means that when you hit a bell, you just have a very clear beginning, like kind of the maximum of the sound is there, and then you have, let's say, this kind of uh, echo going on, or resonance staying in the room. And that's what I want you to do. And with that, I believe you can improve this or refine that lip movement. So you will see, let's maybe just take an E minor, we can take the, the same scale. So if you listen carefully, especially to the end of the notes, you will see how I kind of uh, recreate that bell effect. So. get a lot of air sound, especially at the end of yeah. each note. And I think what you're missing a little bit is that kind of, because you're doing a movement, obviously, but your air just runs out of the flute too quickly. So try, now imagine your air would be like a laser ray, okay? okay. So wh wherever you hit the air as you're doing the let's say the beginning of the note. So I wouldn't call it a forte, but kind of the maximum of the sound at that point. So try to maintain, to think about this laser ray and have that red dot at the end of that laser and try to uh, keep that dot in the same spot as long as you can, although you are doing certain movement. Okay. So with this way, you make sure the air, you kind of force the air to stay in Although your lips are probably, I mean, hopefully doing some my movement, I'll just come closer that you can see some. So it kind of. Good. Yeah, so try to keep it as much, as long as you can inside. I don't know if it's the line or if it's the plane, but sometimes I kind of lose you completely, so I'm not sure if you, if you were playing or not. one note. Now it's still not as clean as it can be, but that's the way to work it. So I would prefer this kind of work on diminuendos, which is a bit quicker, rather doing uh, kind of long notes, diminuendos and stuff, because it's a little bit like if you were going to gym and you try to do an exercise extremely slow, that would be the long notes trying to do a diminuendo, a very long one. So it's actually harder to start with that. So I would recommend to go with a bit quicker and even you can increase a little bit the, the speed so because we're going to find that later in the pieces so And 
I'm also at the same time, if you still imagine that be bell, so you want the clarity of the attack. The first, either. yeah. Yeah, so that is also missing. So, yeah. or, or for a second, because somebody said they can't hear Sammy at all. Um, and the comment was, I think Zoom is canceling the student's flute tone. Does she have original sound turned off? Sammy. Yes. So I have the suppressed background noise and the suppressed intermittent. Like I have all of the. And did you click on turn on original sound in the window? I can hear you perfectly, Sammy. Um, anybody else unable to hear Sammy? Could you just raise it, your it does cut out. So I think if you turn on the original sound, is that supposed to help? Okay, yes, let's, try, to help. let's try that. Okay, good, great. So this is over one note. Now, the, the thing is that this kind of effect now we can apply and it can be over two notes, three notes, four notes, it doesn't matter. And you can take that and it's actually not only for Baroque music, you can apply that to Mozart, you can even go a little bit further in time, Beethoven, Schubert. This is all for all that era of, of music and we should really be able to control that. So let's now do the same scale, just two notes at a time. second note has still a little longer uh, resonance thing. Five minute warning. All right, thank you. Good. Good. Great, great. So let's stop here. Oh, I lost you somehow. Sammy, are you there? Yeah, okay, so let's stop there. I lost you for a while. But let's see now, just take quickly the beginning of the piece and see how you can use that. Because the difference between playing which is kind of, everything is very um, similar and there are no nuances inside. And instead, I would actually use that kind, the same kind of movement to create something like so already the first note, you can use that. Okay. So the high notes, for example, always it's always about the second a, a 16 note. These okay. always need to be a little uh, lighter somehow. Let's try. and actually on that second 16 note and actually that is probably the note that has to be the lightest so if I do it kind of a slow motion thing almost yeah great just uh, hit the E So you start with the Miranda already through that first note of every two notes group, great. And then you still have the diminuendo happening over the second note. And that's exactly the way. Now let's keep going. Uh, for example, bow one, two, three, four. So the same thing should be applied there. So always these upper notes should be really light. 
sorry. Yeah, try to keep the same, yeah, just one movement between two notes. Can you do it really in legato? Good. Yeah, and now just apply a very soft tongue. so we get to the tempo. Yeah, great. Because in this way also what I try to do basically is to, to kind of apply two dynamic uh, zones, let's call it, to the bass and to whatever is the accompaniment. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it, it is a lot of work, I'm not well aware of it, but I think it's the only way to actually achieve that. Right. So it's true here, it's true if you play Mozart concerto, because so this kind of figures, it's exactly the same thing, the same language. So you can really use that kind of uh, lip work to help you to create that. Now just take every day, take a different scale and just practice that because that will, will, it will be your gym for the next, uh, I don't know, few weeks, okay? okay. So do that That's over fine. one note. Great. So I'll just finish. So do it over one note, over two notes and keep doing that over three and four notes. No problem. Kind of under a legato. And you can as well do that in different intervals. Like for example, here you've got these big jumps. So you can definitely take a scale and do something like kind of figures like that. Okay? Okay, sounds wonderful. Good, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Okay. Can everybody hear now? Actually, once you change that, Sammy, it did become more wispy and kind of strange. So the cancellation was, I think, a good a good thing. We'll talk more about that. But is is anybody not able to hear the student at this point? For the for okay. me, it was rather okay. I think it was. It might have been also the internet connection that uh, the person has. Okay, great. Um, so now we're going to move to boom. Great. Um, and let me pull up the score for that really quickly, Professor. Yeah. Um, before we get started with me, I was wondering if we could check to make sure my audio is okay too. Okay. Yeah, just um, okay. I'm gonna get uh, Dustin. I'm gonna let you navigate a discussion with JC about that while I pull up her score. Okay. I think I have it set to. Um, I have the background noise. I have the persistent and intermittent background noise disabled. Just, just play that, something. Just play okay. a note and we will see if it works. Okay. Yeah, it's all, it, quite, it doesn't shut you the pot, so it's fine. Okay. I, Maybe step see. back, uh, GC, when you play, step back a little because it was just kind of like a little too intense. Yeah, um, you can put the, uh, is it on your computer? Yeah, this is my laptop. You can prop it up on a stand in front of you in the studio um, so that it's at a higher level, or if you want to put it in front on the shelf to the left of the desk, you know, whatever's easiest, but that way you're not leaning down as you play. This, by the way, is our flute studio. Those are boom whackers in the bottom right. <laughs> yeah, that's a better position. There you go, JC. Okay, so uh, JC, did you, the video you submitted is it just the excerpt that you're playing today? Yeah, it's the first page and then a section that we worked on in our lesson last week. Okay. Yeah, or let's, start, like, let's start with the beginning, maybe until uh, after the cadenza or something like that for, to start with. You want me to stop right after the cadenza, like around yeah, here? Yeah. Okay. Okie dokie. Here comes JC. Hi, my name is JC Creighton. I'm a junior for the performance major at WVU. Professor, you're not showing your screen. Uh, 
I'm not. Thank oh. you. One second. Thank you, Jacob. I have all these wonderful assistants. <laughs> I love it. I'm so lucky. Okay. Uh, let's see. One second. I also want to pull the score up. Um, so that is here. Mm -hmm. Okie dokie. the screen share so I can see everyone. Um, okay, are, you, uh, are you able to? Yeah, maybe? this is okay. I can see her. Great. Would you like Great. me to, you want me to cancel screen shares? I can do uh, that. No, maybe just go to the beginning. It's fine. Please. Do you mean go to the beginning to, of yeah, the to score? The, to, yeah, to the top. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. So I'm sure, JC, uh, you'll agree that this piece is kind of a virtuosic piece, right? Yeah. Now, um, when you think about virtuos virtuosity, so y you probably think about fingers, right? Yeah. Mm, would you say there are other kind of other types of vir virtuosity? Yeah, I think virtuosity, you can be virtuosic in like tone color and vibrato and like there's all kinds of different elements that yeah. go into it. It's not just finger technique. Great. So how could already just in the first phrase you could uh, actually show us your virtuosity, but not only like how quickly you can play the notes. Um, I could probably experiment with vibrato, especially on the first note. Okay. Um, and maybe I could take a little bit more time throughout the opening gesture so it's not just kind of a whole run down okay. um, at the same tempo. Um, and on the last measure before, or the second to last measure on the first line, I could probably experiment with a couple different tone colors in there too. Okay. Good, great, great ideas. What I'm actually uh, also, I was missing a little bit, is exactly that point between the first bar to the second bar, is that octave and how soft you could probably play that higher note. Because this is also mm -hmm. a type of virtuosity. If you can, you know, imagine uh, like a soprano that will mm -hmm goes so high in such a pianissimo that everybody in the hall and will hold actually that note like extremely long everybody will probably go much more crazy about that rather than how quickly she can do the coloratura uh, passages mm -hmm. so 
try to consider that and see what you can do. Now, I would recommend actually to start, um, so if you're thinking of your right hand, don't, don't be on the normal kind of the E flat. So actually be on the C sharp. So okay. stay, yeah, so be with, to the, let's say like that, to the first note, it doesn't really matter. It's exactly the same thing. But for the top note, it allows you, first it's a slightly sharper fingering, so you can risk there for a little softer note. And it also reacts normally, just also slightly quicker, so it also allows you to, to be in better control. Then after the A, just go back, starting the G, go back to the normal position. Okay, okay so let's uh, try that, really try to have that high A so soft as possible and if possible, don't take a breath after that. Okay. Yeah, so, so actually what I, I would love if you manage to, to keep going on all in one breath as well, because this is again, this is also part of that virtuosity that you can already show just from the beginning. Now, about that high note, so let's do a little exercise just to find where is actually your, your limit with that, ex uh, with that note. So the exercise goes like that. So basically I use this exercise normally, for example, in the warm up routine and stuff. So it will be part of the routine. Um, and it's a little bit about finding where is that kind of the highest layer here uh, on the edge of the wall that the flute starts to react. So what I do is the following. I actually start on purpose totally above the flute. So I just get an air sound, okay? So it's completely airy, no note sound. Okay, totally out. And then what I try to do, I just redirect the air down to the highest point here that this flute just starts to react. So I do it a few times. Let's say that you should sound, uh, you should play basically four short notes. And then at the fifth, in the fifth time, uh, I would love it to be just a long note. So it will sound something like that. Yeah, maybe you need to, to turn on your original sound. Probably it didn't happen yet. Okay, I'm not sure. I don't see that in my settings. Does anybody know where that is? Um, is it in the top left-hand corner yeah. of your screen for you? There's no box mentioning that? I don't see anything in the top left that says that. JC, so probably you need to put the mobile the version, like the app, you may need to push the ellipsis that you can see, and that might be in the options there. Okay, I don't have anything like that on my screen. I don't know why. Okay. I'm on my laptop, so. So it should be, just go quickly to the microphone audio settings. Okay. And then you should have show in meeting option to turn on original sound. Yeah. yeah, there's nothing in my audio that says original sound. On an iPad? No, I'm on my laptop. If you go to the advanced audio settings, do you have something that says show in meeting option to enable original sound for microphone? Oh, yeah. Oh. So then you click that and then it should pop up. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I think I got that. And then click that on the, kind of on the screen. Okay, I think oh, I got so, so let's try again. 
Yeah. Try to avoid that, always when you do this exercise, try to avoid that the lower overtone would come. So I don't want to hear this one coming. Mm -hmm. So the exercise basically now I will just keep going down chromatically, let's say an octave, um, just that on every note you get to develop this kind of um, sensibility to know exactly where does your flute react. So, so try to do it one more time, be very uh, aware to where is that position because after you want in the piece to reach exactly that position as well, okay? So okay. do it one more time and then we'll do the piece. Yeah, as soft as you can. You really want to risk it, okay? Good. So let's go back to the piece and try to see if you can manage to get that. Now take care of the beginning the attack don't have too much of an accent or something happening there so try to be as soft as possible for that beginning and also take time after that note so you can definitely play it longer we still don't have that rhythm of the piano happening. So just take time. Yeah. Can, can you start somehow softer so I don't get a little bunch at the beginning? Intonation drop as you do the, the, the five piano. minutes. Thank you. So, so what you want to do, you want to increase the air pressure as you're doing the crescendo, but use that hold that air pressure through the diminuendo as well. Okay. So to change that octave really nice and smooth, I really, it's like I stretch my body to the two sides, opposite sides. So I kind of lift a little bit myself and the, the kind of the belly and stuff, I kind of stretch down. I don't know how much you can see here, if you can see that, but it's kind of to create that pressure I need for the, for the octave. sure it can be softer now let's continue because I still want to, to, to continue um, keep going and try to do it all in one breath so don't take the breath after the high end good and always in this piece also for the for the later passages here in the slow movement, never go too quickly to that point that we cannot understand each note. Sometimes you kind of run through the things and I'm missing that note. I want to hear the clarity. This is actually the virtuosity. The virtuosity. It's not about playing it as quicker, it's playing it as cleaner as you can mm -hmm. in the quicker tempo. So, So you really clear it down. Okay. So let's do maybe directly. Yeah, 
yeah, so uh, especially the end. change from D sharp to E. Good. So, mm -hmm. Great. So, so keep that in mind and basically you have to apply that through the whole uh, thing later. Now let's continue um, uh, the next phrase. So the Dolce. about the dolce so you want to be soft you don't want to bring yet any too much of a power thing keep that later mm -hmm. to the second movement um, so again all these runs and the trail for example don't do it too kind of too quickly be gentle about things So start slowly and kind of increase a bit. So take also time. And especially always the ending. That's also where you tend to rush the, the fingers. Especially this part. I think it's interesting to hear that. Okay. Once more, the Dolce. That's time. Okay, we'll just finish here. Yeah, some wrong notes around there. Yeah. So the C, yeah, the C stays natural, yeah? finish unfortunately so take care with that and um, find ways to do to show virtuosity in other ways than just trying to to play as quick as possible because in this case I think you're actually losing not gaining from that so slow down things try to for example with this pianissimo and show your breath capacity like long phrases I think that's much more impressive than just trying to play it as quick as possible. But great job. Thank you. Cool. Bravo. Bravo. Okay. So now wow. we'll move to um... Good. So let's maybe start with the uh, I hesitate. Maybe let's start actually with the with the Beethoven because I think it will it's going to be short. Where is that Dustin? Is it first or second? That's second, so it'll be about yeah, somewhere in the My name is Dustin White, a second year master student I'm here sorry, at the where? About the of the two or something, yeah. I think I'm, I'm sorry, I can't what did you say? About three quarters of the way through the video is about where the baby starts. Yeah, even farther. In the last um, probably 30 seconds. Oh, right at the end? Yeah, yeah close. Okay, let me pull the score up. Yeah. 
So, so good job, basically. I just wanted that that's why I prefer to start with that because it's rather short. So it's just a little of stylistic uh, things. So for example, um, the beginning was quite good, clear, no problem, you hold the tempo, this is all good. What I'm concerned with... So, so what I'm concerned is a little bit about the ending of your phrases. So, for example, if you have bar numbers, I guess, of 332, so that would be, for example, the last note here. You do that last note extremely short. And I actually would love if it has a, a little bit similar to the Telemann, so it just has a little bit of uh, kind of a resonance thing. And also the, the next bar, the same thing. Um, so... Just finish nicely this note. And then uh, the next phrase... So actually you give a little accent or you... Um, the, the first F sharp sounds actually louder than the, the G, like the appoggiatura. So, I will take care of that and actually make sure your G is kind of more important than the F. So it needs to be just release. Okay, can we just do directly? Yeah, maybe do the beginning. Uh, would you like me to perform it from the beginning? Yeah, I just do the beginning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, good. Sounds fine so far. Yeah, no, even don't uh, try to accentuate there too much. So make a big deal out of it. Okay. So what I'm actually missing is that the F sharp at the moment is just too long. Okay. You try to make it kind of equal to the G. So just release that now. Exactly. Do that directly. Uh, where are we? Yeah, good. And again, the last note just give it a little bit of resonance to stay, just a bit. Otherwise, it's just too, it's like you cut the note. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, do it. Yeah, continue? Yeah, yeah, sure. sure. Okay. From the A or from where? No, do one, do once, once more from the D and we go on. Better, yeah. Uh -huh. Even more. Okay. No, that was good. That was good. Good. Make sure. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, so, so make sure your A, you really hit it. You cannot miss that note. So. Don't be afraid of it. You can be quite generous. Okay. Good. And also here, so the, the appoggiatura is on the C. So the B natural is not as loud as the C. Uh, so just release the B. And if you can have the staccato a little shorter, that would be even better. Yeah. So by, uh -huh. so by making the staccato shorter, make sure you make each uh, last note of a legato, like a slur, make that note shorter as well. So, 
because you want the F sharp to kind of match the staccatos after. So that's a little secret to make that sounding equal to the staccato. Yeah, great, much better. Okay, so that's in general uh, what I wanted to do. Now, if um, like the very last note, just try even to do a kind of a little crescendo before. I know it's not written, but it's just in order to help you to to show, especially in audition, to show that immediately the difference to the pianissimo. So don't be afraid to give a little more here. So you have that possibility to, to change immediately. Okay. okay, good. So that was about the battle then. Now let's go to the uh, DBC and maybe we can put the recording. Sorry, I had to uh, take the YouTube page down because uh, it was misbehaving. So <laughs> okay. let's see if I can. And now Zoom always makes my email go very slowly. Oh, I also put it in the chat if you're in Zoom. Oh, in the chat. Oh, that'd be really great. Okay. And then I'll take you. Uh, yeah, okay. Let me do it that yeah. way then. Actually, um, are you able to upload it? Or let's see. Uh, yeah, I can do that. You want to just hit it hit, and line it up or whatever? And I'll pull up the score. Thank you, Dustin. Cool. Thanks. Thanks, Dustin. Uh, okay. Oh, does that mean it's going to be sharing from your screen or mine? If I were to share it, then it would be coming from mine. Oh, let me, let me do it then so you can just concentrate. Um, okay. So, so maybe we can just put the, I mean, it's short anyway, but like the beginning phrase, okay. and then the f like the third time. So. I can't, for some reason, I can't find the chat up here with all these things that are open everywhere. Um, oh, here it is, the chat. Technology. Okay. Technology. So the top, the tip of the top one here, right? Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. We have about five minutes left, so would you just want to start from playing with us? Yeah, maybe we can do that. So maybe just in just in just the uh, start playing instead of the recording. Okay. Thanks. So a few things about this uh, beginning. Um, first, I would really try to avoid to do the crescendo at the beginning on the first note because actually it's not written and the BC is normally very precise with what he writes and what he wants. So if you see later the third time, yeah, there is a crescendo. Mm -hmm. So try to avoid doing that and especially try it in the very first time to change the color through. I mean, it's okay if you're playing around with the vibrato. I would probably decide to keep the vibrato to a bit later stage, so don't immediately start with that. Keep it a bit later, especially the first time. Second, maybe is a bit different. But you have three times, you repeat basically kind of the same thing. You can do each one of them differently. So, so avoid a crescendo, avoid also a crescendo going down Da, 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 kind of to the low note. Actually, just keep the dynamic very still. Um, take care in the third bar, always your G sharp is a little too flat, mm -hmm. so you want to make sure it's uh, sharp enough. Um, and let's try this once more. Now, the very top, the very first note, make sure 
you almost just kind of sneak in with I want to know actually when you start that's part of the magic here so what I do in order to get that I'll, I'll come to the camera closer to show you it's like I start the air slightly before I actually get the note so I make the stream of the air going already and then I kind of just close my mouth on the on the note to basically focus it and get the sound so so you see, I start the air, and in a big hole, nobody's gonna have to hear it. So, so if you do that quick enough, you can start without having too much of noises. So just no, no crescendo whatsoever. better because this kind of gives the atmosphere so much more to my taste it really just fits to that if you take the breath in the middle no problem I do it myself as well but then try to avoid the last breath if you are able to do that that would be amazing um, now the second time it happens is already different you have instruments with you playing uh, and at the end you have the oboe kind of joining so Towards the end of that phrase, I will really change the color to kind of try to match the oboe that will come after you. So you can really be, uh, where am I? So instead of this color here, which is gray, just try to get a bit more kind of uh, oboe kind of sound. So a bit darker, a little bit more to the metallic. Uh, type of sound just that the oboe comes in and there's no gap in colors there okay now I want to that we skip uh, to the third one um, so maybe you can do directly the third uh, entrance uh, yeah so oh. So plan your breaths. I think in the recording you said your breath was differently. So um, so this is one thing. Now as well, respect the crescendo which are written. So don't do sudden diminuendo. Um, don't uh, don't um, kind of drop that tension you create. So. change color so take some time that in the recording I, I was missing you were kind of just going to the piano take time don't worry it's that conductor will follow you and the whole orchestra will follow you but it's so nice of a moment to change color so maybe do directly just from here So don't, mm, don't, don't drop the dynamic. Uh, keep also the color. Just, just keep going. Yeah, and this is a bit, it's just a bit, yeah, it's just a bit flat, you're being natural. Yeah, but 
but take the yeah take the breath break the the legato because you don't want to take the breath at the place you change the color so keep that also in mind so so we'll take it before the g sharp and then just keep playing that's time okay we'll just finish here do last time that uh, yeah one more time no? Just finish here. So first thing, make sure that high C, that's your peak. So you want that note to be as full as possible. So what I do to help me to do that, I'll just show you quickly. I just try to drop a bit my jaw down. So instead of being here, so I'm really opening to get this kind of uh, resonance. Uh, in the sound and then uh, just before the 12 8 bar that's another place to change color so take time keep the color keep the darker sound and kind of go back almost to the sound of the beginning so really play but don't take a breath there because that's exactly point not to take the breath okay great thank Good. you that's great well thank you thank you uh great job justin and thank you ori i was wondering if you could answer a question yes of uh, course. No. all of us in closing sure. um so i was telling um a student this week that i've gotten into uh, discussions with multiple conductors about the opening phrase of the fawn and one of my favorite questions to ask is what do you think about it being in one breath and every single time i've asked that question they've been like what do you mean i i don't know what you're talking about yeah. and i'm like well in the flute world there's this obsession with like it has to be in one breath and and most of the conductors don't even know that that's a flute thing yeah. so i'm wondering if you could just speak a little bit to your experiences first with whether you've ever had a conductor specify where he mm -hmm. wants you to breathe. And secondly, uh, you know, what your thoughts are on this idea of doing the whole thing in one breath. So um, when I did play that, it was never an issue. I took the breath. Nobody was mentioning anything. Isn't that nice to know everybody that nobody cares yeah. except for flute well, there, there is kind of a funny story. I know uh, Sylvia Caredu told me that, that she's a good friend with the Emmanuel Pau when they were tell doing her, that. Tell her I said hello. Yeah, I always send. So she was telling me that, uh, I mean, the Berlin Philharmonic were doing and Emmanuel Pau was playing and, um, and she asked him, can you please make a recording that you take a breath in the middle so students will actually be kind of, uh, that we'll see it's actually allowed to take a breath. So one, if you look, you can find a recording with a breath. So oh, that's know, cool. Yeah. And, and where does he take it? Does he take it where Dustin took the, the first one? Yeah, so, yeah, I think if I remember just uh, there in the middle, so. Yeah. So it's not a big deal, it's nothing you need to worry about. I think the most important is just kind of to not make a big deal out of that breath. Of course, you don't want the breath to be so long that it breaks the whole uh, phrase or something, but if you just take a quick one and nobody notice. Yeah. I think. So there's also another breath that no one, I've never heard anyone take that I take sometimes. Uh -huh. And that's right at the end of the first bar. Ba -da 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 -da. And it, it's, it's possible with the onset that you're talking about when you come in without the tongue, it's possible to kind of slip yeah. a little bit of a breath in there with the timing. And, and um, it's, it's, a, it's a sneaky, sneaky business, but... Uh, yeah. Definitely. Another, I mean, as long as you hide things, 
nobody should know. It's like yeah. with the, you know, like alternative fingerings. If it sounds well, nobody will ever tell you anything. If, if you kind of fuck it up, then you'll start having the questions. But as long as it sounds natural, and I think we can do a lot of things that, yeah, and kind of break these rules. Yeah, great. So I have one last question for you. I, I really love your um, attention to just the detail of the and the um, tone production. So with your flute and vein class, um, what is? Can you send this information so I can send it to the students? Yeah, so sure. Let me. So you like you have a certain days that you meet and a price schedule. No, well, yeah. So basically, we because it's not a group class; it's a individual class. So we basically, classes. yeah. So we just set it together according to your schedule, to my schedule, and we, we just find the dates that it works. Maybe probably if you guys in the US, so it will have to be in your morning. So here it's afternoon, so it kind of works. Okay. Um, and then uh, it depends what you wish to do. So if you want to, for example, to do the warm up course, so we'll, it's basically it's three days, consecutive days that we're working one hour every day. So for example, I don't know, we would do from 10 to 11 your time for three days. And then what we're do going to do, so for example, so um, that air direction was part of it, but there are many other exercises. So I start basically from the basics about how to focus your sound, how to control actually what's going on here inside, you know, to, to find out the colors, the, the focus, then we learn how to actually increase, decrease the air pressure, play with it around in order to help us. So second, third octave, you're really in control of what's going on here. Um, then what else we're doing? So after that, we control the air direction. Then we put um, and we work on how to change from that because, yeah, so. So the air direction would have two parts. It will have the pianissimo, but will have also have the opposite, the fortissimo, because also the fortissimo to, to find that very deep position in order to get the fortissimo. And then we take another exercise and put both in one exercise, so from fortissimo to pianissimo. Then we do an exercise which is simply just for the lips to really uh, separate the lips from anything else. So it's not about the jaw movement anymore. It's simply just about being able to use the lips. So in that case, I'm using some octaves in order to, to train basically the lips. It's not that I will do the octaves this way necessarily when I play a piece, but it's just a little bit of gene for the muscles. Then how to play big intervals smoothly, then some double uh, tongue in articulation, baroque articulation. So it's actually, okay. it has a lot of. Yeah, so send us the information and we'll okay. talk to and, um and we'll, we'll talk further via email. Thank okay. you everybody for your attention. I know it's a busy school day and, and most of us don't normally have class at this time for flute. So thanks for moving things around and see you all. We don't have studio at three today, but we'll meet on Thursday. And uh, again, if you're visiting, please check out our schedule on the WVU studio page. It has all the listings of all of our different um, events this and a recital tomorrow night at 6 30 new york time any right. question that somebody might have i didn't ask all good